Hello, Tom. Hello, Conan. How are you doing, man? Really nice to meet you, dude. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Conan Avery, is it, or Avery? That, that it's Avery, yes. Yeah. And is it Rosenthal or Rosenthal? Well, I always think with names, you know, people should just do what they want, but it's te- I think it's technically Tal. Okay, I thought that. But yes, yeah, so you got it. You was you you got it right the first time. But I think you know what what is a name? Who knows? I just want to get started on this. And um, there's a lot I want to ask you about. There's a lot we could discuss. I think we'll just I'll just start the question the, the the podcast by pointing us towards what first made you want to do music. I get what got us all into music. There's music in our house and there's music around, and we're all drawn to it as listeners as children. But was there a pivotal moment where you saw or heard an artist and you went, "Wow, I've got to do this." And if so, like, what was that? Oh God, what a what a good question. You know what? From the from the get go, I never really thought I was going to do it. Um, and well, maybe I still don't. But you know, it kind of you know, like I I grew up around kind of uh, my mother worked as a kind of runner at Abbey Road Studios in the sixties, early seventies. Um may have had a few brief dalliances with um Paul McCartney as well. It could have been my dad, but alas, no, I missed, <laughs> missed that boat. And so she had an amazing record collection um, of just great 60s artists. And so I kind of got into like, I suppose, you know, American folk, you know, people like Don McLean, John Denver, etc. But I never, you know, I never really, I listened. I thought these these guys are doing beautiful songs. But I never really thought, oh, you know what? I can do that. I'm going to do that. And really, it was a very slow, a very slow burn from the from the start to to where we are now. But essentially, you know, I started writing songs like most young men start writing songs. You know, to, to for various romantic reasons. You know, various girls that I wanted to impress at a young age, and and I didn't think for a second really that it would ever be. A, whatever you want to call it, career. I hate that. I don't really like that word, but you know, like a a vo- vocation. I don't like that word either. I don't. Know. I never thought it'd be like a viable way to to actually make a living. Mm. So it was just a case of you sort of almost fell into it through doing it, and it sort of just built and grew over the years, kind of thing. And you sort of found yourself, I guess, with a viable career and, and through it. Yeah, it was. It was very so. I mean, it started started on the old mice back in the myspace days which i think actually is a kind of a platform i suppose only just now with tiktok but even even still i think in a weird way i think myspace was the best platform or such a well-designed platform for kind of a new artist or someone drawing stuff out you know everyone seemed to listen to everyone else everyone was kind of very generous with their words and their time with it and and yeah, I suppose that was just a moment. As soon, I think in life, as soon as you find that that, as soon as you find, you know, as soon as you find some kind of platform to put your your work out there, where essentially you can see if someone who's not your mum is going to like something, you know, so you're like, oh, and then you think, and then you get something positive, and then from there, my mind went, oh wow, one person's like this, that I've got, they've got no reason to like it. You know, no good reason. They're not my auntie. They're not a lover. You know, they're not a milkman. There's no good reason other than they must just like the song or my voice. And they've said something nice about it. And as soon as you see that, you know, my mind went a bit like, oh, hang on. Well, you know, if it's just one person really getting into your music or whatever, why can't 10 people? And if it's 10 people, why can't a thousand? If it's a thousand, why not? A million, you know what I mean? Like it's just, you know, it's like you know, well, so that kind of gave me the impetus to go. Well, you know what? I got to keep going with this, and this is interesting. And I do. I still didn't have any idea how on earth I was going to do it in a, like a proper way. That kind of was a, a kick off. But I only started really writing songs just because it, well, it, was, it was a pleasurable thing to do, but also just for 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 the ladies. You totally get it, man. Yeah, hundred percent. I think a lot of us get into it for that reason, to show off and to try and attract a, a nice girl. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's interesting that I think uh, a lot of people, the the only feedback they're getting on their music and their songs is this kind of, you know, family member being nice and polite, or or you know, trying to make you feel good about what you're doing and encourage you, which is lovely. But 
a genuine connection from someone that's outside of that, that, like you say, has no good reason to, you know, massage your ego and make you feel good about what you're doing. That is a really good indicator that, hang on a minute, maybe there is something in this because what it is, is it's a connection. And I think what's really beautiful, actually, about what you just said is you recognize the importance of connecting to one person. And it was from there that you then saw that, oh, well, maybe it could be two. And, oh, isn't that nice? There's three now. And look at that, a hundred and a thousand. I think a lot of artists get really caught up in how many people are watching them or not watching them. And they forget that that one individual that might yeah. be really moved by their music yeah. and think, well, that's not enough. You know, yeah. um, I was actually chatting to an artist the other day who said about this. Um, he had he had someone say to him about, you know, your music's so amazing. It's changed my life and all of this. And he admitted to me, he said, I, I just didn't kind of care in that moment. It was just like, oh, well, I'm not getting enough of what I want. And I didn't give that person the respect that they deserve. They connected to my music. And it's an interesting thing that. Um, so how do you not pay attention to the numbers and keep caring just about that individual connection when there's so much kind of focus these days on those big numbers? Like, how do you do that? And how would another artist sort of get back to that? I was very lucky to start writing songs when, you know, numbers didn't really exist. It, you know, they existed. I think, I suppose you could just, I think I remember, you know, maybe on MySpace and you could see, I suppose, an amount of plays, but I never got the sense of, you know, it was never calculated in the way it is now. There was ne there was never, you know, there was probably one millionth of the amount of statistics that are available now. You know, so obviously, you know, any artist can go on Spotify for artists and see exactly, you know, how many songs, how many times X song has been played in Papua New Guinea, you know, and by, you know, what exact age and what exact place and what exact way for how long. I mean, it's just, you know, it's mind blowing now. But back then there was absolutely, you know, there was absolutely minimal to go on. So was, I was very thankful that I never really, you know, you never really based your output on now on those numbers you just you know you, you would make things and then go for and then you know <laughs> you make things and go from there I, I mean i maintain that i mean the biggest danger a new artist or any artist really can but well, the biggest the biggest danger in their songwriting or potential songwriting is to is to worry too much about those numbers because it, you know it, it's so incredible the formula and the equation is so incredibly straightforward if you make a song that connects with people, it will do well. Good songs travel, you know, good song. If you hear a good song, you go, listen, mum, here's a lovely song. Or let's put the song in the car. Oh, and someone else hears it. You know, it just takes time. I think everyone wants this kind of really instant, like, why isn't my song getting like 20 million streams in like five days? It takes ages. And sometimes you find, see, I've written songs ages ago that have had little, been on TV programs or having little lifts, you know, three, four, five, six years after they were written, after they came out. And then suddenly they have a new life. Now, you know, it, it happens because the song was, you know, a, de a good, whatever, decent, relatable, interesting, whatever you want to call it, song in the first place. And I think that's the, that really is the key. But I was, I, but I admit also, I'm very lucky to have, to have started this whole journey in a time when, you know, analytics wasn't really a thing. And I couldn't study my numbers and think, oh, that song does this there, this star does this there, I will therefore, you know, I suppose I was just focused on, do, do, you know, doing songs that I like, putting them Making out. Making stuff. Yeah, putting them out there. Obviously you got to see a reaction, you know, you knew what a good reaction was and that was nice, but I can see so easily how people are thrown by numbers now. Well, I tell artists that all the time. It's like focus on what you're doing. Um, if, you know, focusing on numbers, you choke the potential for what something could be and you set yourself up for a bit of disappointment. And my experience has been if you focus on making the best stuff that you can that you want to make and it is worthy of connection and it does connect to people, numbers are a byproduct of that. Mm. And, you know, what is your goal here anyway? What What's better, the numbers that are a byproduct or the connection itself? I say the connection itself. And, you know, who cares about those numbers? But it is a metric that I think a lot of artists are just stuck on, you know. Um, what, sometimes when I say this, though, like focusing on the music, people will say things like, yeah, build it and they will come. And I don't exactly agree with that. 
because I think that people assume with that that like okay if you just make good music people will just flock to you and it's like well you do have to also put it out there you do also have to market it and that is another part of it yeah. um but I think that we're so focused on the marketing end now that we forget the thing that we were building in the first place um so like when it comes to that marketing end of it obviously you know you're starting out on myspace and we've had a lot of iterations of social media since then and how to market music the the independent market has blown up and you have embraced the new platform which is tiktok which is the best place to market your music and that's really really worked for you so i'd I'd like to jump onto a bit of that and when did you first decide that looks all right that tiktok game i think i'll jump on there and have have a play around what drew you to that and um what were those first initial kind of bits of content and your first experience of it like well i wish i could say that i was a great visionary and you know always knew tiktok would be massive for art emerging artists (laughs) and i would like to think myself as actually someone that you know thinks ahead and can see how things are going blah 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 but really you know what drew it to me was having enough of a fan base at that point going, well, look, you've got quite a few songs that are happening on there or a few different bits. You know, I've heard you pop up, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, well, okay, well, you know, I'll be a fool then to not give that a good look and a good investigation. Now, I suppose where I can give myself a tiny bit of credit is that I know a lot of artists who also had things happening there and they took one look at it and go, no, no, thanks. Not for me. That's not my vibe. It's, it's a bunch of kids dancing or whatever, or it's this or it's that, you know, it's, I, I, I'm above that. Sorry, we'll see you later. And of course, these are the same artists a year later who say it's the best thing that's ever happened. So, um, cool. um, so at least I did get in there early-ish, but yeah, what really drew me to it was the fact that, it, you know, oh, I, oh, this is interesting. My songs are being used. Anywhere your songs are being used, well, that's that's something. And I kind of quickly, what I quickly figured out was, well, it, you know, I quickly saw this represents the greatest opportunity to for independent artists there's ever been. You know, I I, I think you could see Agreed. I think you could see that within seconds. It, it, what, you know, it basically didn't. It just took, you know this is you know a whole app which is now the kind of dominant social media app at least for young people, and it will be the most dominant one in the world. If, you know, for everyone soon anyway. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. And here and here is an app which really at its heart is sound, you know, as in, sure, it's a medley of all kinds of people making various content, but there's always the option for the soundtrack. And very often people are working from the sound to make the video. That's never happened before. Great shout. You know, so Mm. sound is, sound is, you know, even if someone's farting or someone doing a joke or someone doing a story or whatever, the sound is the crux of it. And so as soon as I thought that, I thought, well, okay, well, if that's the case, you know, we're talking here, like, you know, let's, let's think about how this is going to work and, and uh, make it happen. And then I suppose, and then the next thing is, you know, once you've have a song that's doing a writer there is, is the chance to say, look, here's, I don't know how many, not to show off or anything, but well, I've got like, I don't know, a good few million, a, lot. a good few million monthly listeners on Spotify. Right. But how many of them would, 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 would recognize me if I was going down the street? Not 5 million. Definitely. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, they might recognise my voice, the songs, but the face, the the, the man, the, the thing, you know, I was I, I would I would say at least half of them wouldn't. Maybe maybe plus, maybe plus half, maybe seventy percent. And then when I finally start to say, well, hi, this is me. I, I'm the guy who does the song that you like. You know, then I realise how many people hadn't seen me. And they're like, oh, you oh, you look quite nice. I've been listening to music for twelve years. I've literally never mm-hmm. seen your face. You know, here I am thinking, mm. you know, oh yeah, probably, you know. The thing about it, you have to, under, I think the thing that people have to understand is that 95% of me, people when they listen to music don't give a shit about you. They, they, like, they like the song. Correct. And they like how it sounds. They like how it feels. They look out of a train window. They don't go, oh, I wonder if Tom, uh, what he thinks about this. I wonder if he's got any children. I wonder who his wife is. I wonder if he's got any children. I wonder if he takes nice photos. They're not thinking about that. Understandably, rightfully. I mean, I don't, I don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't I don't necessarily want them to, but TikTok is this amazing way of like saying, I'm this person related to this sound. 
and look at me, here I am. If you want more of me, you can get me or, you know, you can invest in me more. This is me. And it's a, and so that for me was an incredible opportunity. It's basically, you know, a mind blowing opportunity to connect face with with song in a, in a way that's never been happened. And I've tried really hard to connect face with song throughout my throughout my musical life. You know, I've, as you were saying, with marketing, it is now crucial. I, th- I think it's always been crucial. It's just that now you have you kind of self the authenticity of the self is now critical on on these platforms so now you can't get someone else to do it for you in the days in the days gone by old ed sheeran could go matey stick stick a million of my plasters plaster boards or uh, uh, billboards of my face all around town thanks very much i'm off to my desert island uh stick me on the radio <laughs> stick me on every playlist in the world thank you very much see you off the desert island now he's got to turn up and he's going to make these videos because it's not enough to be on a billboard. It's not enough to be on the radio. So, and they want that authenticity, and you can't you can't outsource that. You've exactly. got to show who you yeah. are. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, and of course, it, I've got absolutely what I've got is no time for whatsoever. Is any artist going? Oh, I don't think I could. Oh, I just can't do that. You know, th- th- there's people going who, who are currently going to war. There, there are nurses who who have to clean people's you know, bums all day, and you're going, oh, no, I don't think I could possibly do a video when I sing my song. I don't think, I, you know, like, get a fucking grip. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you're Good lucky You're man. lucky. Yeah. You're lucky enough to be able to sing a song. Like, you know, if you want it to happen, you've also got to do a bit of that side. You don't have to do anything crazy. I, I still maintain you don't have to go wild. You just have to be up for it, a little bit of fun, maybe a little bit of introspection, a bit of thinking about how you can present yourself well, you know, how you can present your song well. But I'm still flabbergasted at how many artists I talk to go and go, oh, no, I'm not sure. And I just like, you know, you know, I like doing this. So, well, good on you. Enjoy doing the song, but it's never going to it's never going to work long term. If you want to if you want to be lucky Absolutely. enough, if you want to be lucky enough to do this forever, you have to be able to go go places, you know, and I suppose it's different. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. I was just going to say, I hear artists saying things like that all the time, you know, like, oh, I don't want to make content. You know, I just want to make music. And I. I always sort of like rewind it back a bit and say, okay, uh, yeah, I don't want to make music videos. I just want to make music. You know, I don't want to play the Royal Court. I just want to make music. Mozart. It's like, there's always something that comes along with the thing that you want to do that you didn't think that you had to do or that was part of it at first. And, and again, we make such, or a lot of artists make such a big deal out of it. Like it's this problem, you know, and it's like, get your phone out and say, hey, this is me. This is what I do. And just do that. And get over that first initial hump. And actually, another thing that I want to get into artists' heads is marketing is not separate from your art. I think as an artist, you live as an artist. It's a mode of being. It's a type of person. And it's not just at the pen to paper stage that you're an artist. It's how do I present myself? How do I go about my life is an artistic endeavor. That's your personality type. And you said earlier, you know, vocation or whatever else, like, yeah. And, you know, it stops seeing these things as separate, difficult tasks that I have to do and approach it as art because you're an artist and transcend the status quo of what everyone's telling you to do and do what you want to do because that's what artists do. Use the tools at your hands to, you know, express yourself in the way that you want to. And I think what the problem I'm seeing a lot of with artists these days is they're asking you know, what content should I make? How should I market myself? How should I do this? How should I do that? And they're giving their power away to people like me who are just going to say, okay, you need a hook on your video. You've got to do a seven second video. It's got to be this, it's got to be that. You need a call to action. But then what, what do you end up making? That's not your art. That's content that someone else told you to make. And now you're making something you didn't really want to do. Then you're probably not going to get the outcomes. You're not actually showing yourself authentically. Break free from that. I want artists to, to really step into that. You said the word earlier about being a visionary. That is what an artist's sort of job is. You're the ones that can see. You're the ones that are at the head of the curve. And, you know, you should have your own vision of what you want to do. And then marketing is just an extension of that. Stop thinking about it as marketing. Stop thinking about it as this separate thing. So like I'm an artist and here's a new medium for me to be artistic. And I think that's the way, you know. Completely agree. It is truly amazing how how few 
I mean, yeah, I mean, that's it. You don't really have, I mean, you don't have to be anybody else. You just have to do it in your own way, you know, in the same way you do your songs in your own way. And it really doesn't take it. You don't even particularly have to leave your house. You know, I mean, it's it, it's asking so little, really, of anyone that they kind of give it a bash. You know, it's like, you know, it's like oh, I say to all the you know, young artists I, I, I do things with and I say, you know, just, you know, make sure you're, you're lit well. You know, make sure it sounds all right. You've got, you know, you're close to the microphone, sing your song. I mean, it's very, such a basic, such basic requirements really is. I mean, and they're so lucky. They, you know, they don't need, you know, back in the day, you know, if you had to do a video, music, you know, a music video would cost you, you know, a decent one. If you've got actual proper people making it, at least a grand or two, you know. And here they mm -hmm. are with the opportunity to do it for absolutely nothing in their comfort of their own home to potentially reach millions of people with a press of a button and they find a way of thinking it's a, it's a problem. Mm. So It's interesting you know. that. I think there's an inner battle going on with a lot of artists and they're looking outwards asking for answers and they're, they're, it's, it's getting them further and further away from like their true self, that thing that initially made them go, I want to do music, I'm called to this. And that they get sort of lost in the source of asking everyone else in the external what they should do. And I think a lot of them end up paralysed through this analysis and thinking that, okay, well, they've done it that way and this guru's telling me to do it this way. And you sort of end up just sitting there not doing much in a state of like, yeah, just being paralysed. How do you just, how do I, well, I'm asking, I guess, how do I get artists to break free from that asking outwards and to come back to their inner knowing and develop the strength to go there because i think that's what it is i think first of all to write good songs it requires that strength yeah. you can't just copy what's out there if you want to write something good you've got to dig deep and that means to be really vulnerable and face yourself face your shadow that is serious strength how do they then like if they're doing that in the studio and they're making songs where they're willing to go there and be strong how do they develop that strength to then put it out into the world in that same manner instead of sort of going, okay, I've got to package it in a way that they say I should do it. And tuning into that inner knowing, you know, how do you do that? How does an artist go about that? I think it's two very different things. And the best way for them is to think about it. It's two very different things. One is when, you know, in the state in which you're writing a song in the first place and you're trying to tap into, I don't know, something, something towards a core rather than something that's not, to surface level and you know you, you're really you know you're digging deep to find what you need to find to to make make a powerful song or whatever song you want to make i suppose um you know that's one that's one emotional journey and that's i, I think in a sense that you could we could you can park that somewhere where it is I, I i think the second thing then which is very separate to that is just the ability to to let go and to, to realize, well, you know what? I've had that moment of writing that song there. Now I've got to be a bit, someone a bit different. I actually might have to be, you know, mm. you know, might have to be someone Look, I'm not, you know, if I, you know, the amount of times I've put my phone down in weird places to do a TikTok for 20 seconds, uh, you know, and that TikTok say is nothing. It's completely far removed from from the actual writing, the process of writing that song, and who I was when I wrote that song, and mm. and, and the emotions of that song. It's so different. It's like it's it's chalk and cheese. And with the with the cheese of the video, you know, it's it's about you know letting go, and all you have to do let go for a minute. You know, put your phone somewhere funny, have mm. a few people wander around in the background, you know, think about what you do. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like this, I think it's just finding ways to kind of release yourself from yourself just for very small moments. Right. And that makes a huge difference. That's it. You don't have to do it for days. You don't, you just have to summon the strength to do it for maybe a minute or 30 seconds. And then you, you know, and then you're mm -hmm. flying. But of course there are levels and even at the, the basic level, just to find a way of just singing the song, you know, there's always a way around it. You know, maybe, maybe don't look at the camera. Maybe, I don't know, have someone in the room that you're singing to you know like try everything i think a lot of people don't you know try stuff. you know that's it i, I think a lot of people go, mm. think, just give up at first oh God, i couldn't do that i could never do that not me it's not me it's not me it's not me it's not me well have you mm. tried everything have you really tried everything in, in in a way to get around it 
you know, because I know it's not ideal, it's not perfect. It, it could be like, you know, in, in an ideal world, we all be Nick Drake and write beautiful songs and then retire back to our bedrooms to read poetry for 23 hours a day. You know, like, it would be lovely, absolutely delicious. Wouldn't well, that be great? And you're, mm-hmm. but it's not like that. And, you know, yeah. you have to earn the right to, 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 to write, to release these next songs by doing it, you know, every song justice, you know, with what you've done. So that letting go, is it letting go to, do you think it's attachment of sort of what the outcome, uh, their attachment to that moment that they wrote the song? What is it that you have to let go of? Because I, I think I get it. It's sort of, you almost have to just surrender and give up um, your own projections and your own, um, you know, what you want it to be or what you think others should perceive it to be. And you just sort of have to let go and be free. And just go, I'm just going to try something. This feels fun and this feels good. But what is it exactly that we're letting go of in that moment? And how do we do that exactly, yeah. you know? It, I mean, uh, really, it's, it, really, that is, in a sense, like, you know, you, you won't ask a more pertinent question in this whole thing. I mean, it's like, you know, that is basically at the at the the very core of what is ever a, a good song, good artist, good anything. Like, you know, I think, ah, oh, you know, anything that's too safe or too square or too tight, too rigid, you know, never works. I'm always really taken by all these, a lot of these sounds that really go wild on TikTok. And actually often, they're often, they're quite imperfect. You know, they're little funny, little, oh, yeah, they're funny sure. little natural bits, but what they all are is often really natural. You know, they sound like someone's just getting up on the mic and doing their thing or, you know, I mean, it, it, they sound quite, so many of them are quite loose and they're just of the moment. And I, and, and yet yeah, the letting go, I think is just, is just the pivotal. Now it's really hard to kind of, to, to, to find ways of, of explaining people how to do that. I think, you know, mm. you, like, you know, it's that classic. If you want to go back to, as Nietzsche said, if you want to go back and change a man, you've got to start with his grandmother. You know, like, I mean, you know, sometimes people are really hard to change, you know, really, really hard to change. And that letting go is just super tr- tricky. All, all, I, all I would say, I suppose, is just, you know, it, finding a way to do that, I would say, is potentially, you know, more important than... Well, it is more important than being brilliant at your instrument. It's more important than being mm-hmm. a brilliant lyricist. It's more important than being a great vocalist. Like, to, to be able to go outside of yourself, outside of what you might think you could have been or whatever. So to push for something just beyond is where you get mm. some, you know, somewhere. I mean, I, I, I mean, just on a personal level, I, you know, I, I've never claimed that, you know, my, I, you know, I, I don't think that that highly of my own songs. I think I, I, I think some of them are really good. Um, but what I can say is that a lot of them have been recorded incredibly shoddily, very quickly. I was just running on just whatever, just, you know, just, you know, f- after a few takes, I was never very precious about anything at the start. And I always really try now not to be too precious about things and realize, you know what, you could do something a hundred times. Sometimes it won't be exactly what was in your head, you know, but you've got to recognize when in one of those hundred times you did something that was slightly interesting and you've got to recognize what that Mm. bit is. Oh, that was a bit interesting. That was a bit different. Oh, I kind of like that. And that's, and maybe that's letting go. Maybe that's real realizing that, you know, you can't have it exactly how you want it ever. Nothing ever goes to plan. You know, as as the great, my, I think my you know my favorite quote of all time is the Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, not that I, obviously he's an awful guy, Mike Tyson, but but um, he's a you know everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Now it's like you know, we all <laughs> we, we we like we've all got a plan. We, we when they do the song, it's like oh I, oh I've got the demo now. I know this can be recorded beautifully. And you think about the music video. I've got this great concept. It's never how you think it's going to be. Now I think it's about how it's, but it's about how you react to that. Um, so there are always ways of this letting go thing. There's always ways to push yourself and try. And ultimately, it kind of will be quite possibly the making or breaking of your artistic career, whether you can or whether you cannot. It's, it's that important. Mm. So, you know, it's funny how people work on, you know, they have a piano lesson or they have a vocal lesson or whatever. But, you know, I would say put as much time into your, into your, into your guitar lessons as putting into finding ways to let go right 
But I mean, that, that's a fun, but that's not an easy. Th- and then it's that's you know, I, I hold my hand up and say, well, there's a million ways you can do that. So I know that's complicated. It, it is. I mean, what I'm asking is a deep psychological question, you know, and it's not something that there's a, a course on that, you know, you can get. But what I found in my experience is when we project onto an outcome that we want, um, you know, I, I, this, I want to get a million streams or, you know, whatever it might be for an artist. I feel like that you actually choke the potential for what it could be. And that outcome that we project, we might think it's quite a big thing, but I, I think in wanting it to be a certain way, um, you actually destroy the potential for how much more it could be. Just and that's a part of letting go of it. Going well, you know, I want a million streams. I want this. I want that. And if you if you want that so bad, that energy is around the thing that you're doing. And okay, if it's a million streams you want, you might get to a million streams. But if you were just more, if you lightened up and didn't require the outcome so much. What I found is that you get an abundance more than what you could have ever projected on it. Um, but it's a real difficult thing to get into people's heads is to just let go and have fun. Um, but, but actually, I do think that that's one of the fundamental energies that we need for something to actually flourish. Is enjoyment. You know, like if you're not enjoying the process, man, I don't think us as viewers and audience members, we will pick up on that fundamental energy that's in it. And, and we do. We we see when someone, you know, you see a piece of content where you can tell they're pushing me, me towards giving them the outcome and we don't connect to that. Whereas when someone's loose and free and they don't really mind what's going on and they're enjoying it, it's like, oh, that looks fun. They look like they're enjoying themselves. I want to I want to enjoy myself. And, yeah. and again, th- th- this is one of the problems right now with artists, man. I speak to so many of you guys, you know, all, all different levels and ma- mainly younger, early stage artists, but... They just want it to be a certain way so much that they completely disconnect to having fun with it. They're all frustrated. People will reach out to me for a consultation and they're just like, oh, uh, uh, and I'm like, hang on a minute. Like, why are you doing this? You are making this really not fun for yourself. And you've lost, you, you know, it's like they're so lost in the source of all the external how to's and whatever that they lose what they actually like about doing music. Yeah, it's um, it's a crazy, crazy thing. W- what I'm trying to get people to do is to enjoy it more because we we play music. We don't work music. You play an instrument. You play songs. You play live. It's play. We play games because they're fun. And if you're not enjoying playing anymore, like you've either you're either playing the wrong game or you need to recalibrate what you're projecting on for the outcome of the game, you know, and get back to enjoying it. The the point of playing a game of football isn't necessarily to get to the result. It's the playing, you know, and we say, well played. And when the game stops, we stop enjoying ourselves because the game's over. And what I found with these artists these days, or a lot of early stage frustrated artists, they're just not enjoying it. And then that's resonating out to not just their music, their production, but then how they're presenting themselves on social media and marketing themselves. And you can tell Mm. this person isn't enjoying themselves. And me as an audience member, I'm not connecting. I guess something that I'm trying to do is help artists shift their focus from outcomes and the numbers and all of that stuff to getting a sense of fulfillment from the just doing it and having fun in the playing of it. Yeah. and that's something I've heard you speak about before. It's like enjoying it. And, you know, how, how does an artist do that? Is it just this detach from the outcome and, and just get onto the, pro- the, the process? Is it just as simple as that? Well, I think I'm very taken with what, what you just said there. Fun is, it's funny, funny to say these words, but, you know, fun is critical. I, I don't think I'll be talking to you here today or anywhere remotely where I am in position of musical world without fun you know like all my first music videos were me and a mate going out he had he had a decent camera through his job he didn't even know you know it wasn't his camera he just like borrowed it from his work and we went about we had these very stupid basic ideas you know for instance one of them was you know I, I I got members of the public to like play the ukulele along to this song, or, you know, just pretend playing it, obviously. And I was somewhere in the background in each shot kind of doing something silly or whatever. Um, incredibly basic, but it was fun. We had fun doing it. Therefore, people watching it enjoyed it. 
they probably thought, oh, look, there's a guy. If you find this guy, this, this guy looks to have a good laugh. What else is he doing? And the vast majority of my early music videos, well, I hope still are, like that. Don't, you know, not taking yourself too seriously, having a good time, you know, not thinking, overly thinking, oh, I hope this gets a million views, whatever, or as you say, just, you know, just doing mm. it and getting it out there, having something that represents whatever side of yourself you're happy to, to be out there. And I think a lot of people think that fun, you know, a lot of people take themselves very seriously, which also mm. is, a, is a fatal mistake. And I always think, actually, you know what? Not only is being fun important, but even if you're a very serious songwriter who writes very serious emotional music, I would actually say, you know, there's a good chance, or I actually personally think that you enhance that side by furthering the other side. You know, as in, if you're working on both sides, both your 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 darkness and your light, you you strengthen both sides. You know, if you're if you're mm. if you're all darkness, that darkness is weaker than if you if you also go to yeah, the light. Right. And I, and, I, and I think and I think and I just think not enough people kind of realize that you don't have to necessarily have fun songs to try and have a sense of fun or a sense of taking yourself lightly. For sure. You know, it's not, you know, mm. it helps. It helps to have some, some fun songs for sure. Um, but, you know, I did lots of fairly just chilled videos to, 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 to kind of, you know, uh, fairly emotional songs. They definitely weren't like necessarily, you know, you know, jumping up and down songs at all. Um, but the, the videos mm -hmm. were kind of light and weren't too serious and authentic and, and myself. And, and that made a huge difference. And I just think, you know, it helps your songwriting as well. It, you know, I get, I, you know, I really think if you, you know, if you go from writing one serious song and it's not working, then you write the next song you write is a nice, fun, light one, you know, about cheese or whatever, whatever it might be. And then you go back again to, you know, you're, you're, you're helping your songwriting. You're stretching out your emotion. Mm. It's the same emotion. If you can make, if you can make someone dance, you probably can make them cry. It's like, it's the same kind of thing. It's just heightened emotions, isn't it? Um, mm. And I think mm. that, yeah. Yeah, I think you have a balance of that in your music, even in the really serious songs of yours. You you can add a little bit of humour on the odd line and things like that that sort of make you go, oh, you know, oh, thank you, because this is a very serious topic that you might be talking about, but there's this one line here that sort of give me a little break from it. To go, oh, it's okay, you know, yeah, we're talking about something serious, but it's still fun. It's yeah. still music. Yeah. It's a part of all of it. Yeah. It's the yeah. yin and my yang. It's not doesn't all have to be the light, you know. Yeah. Really interesting. Completely. So is a part of this then about integrating one's shadow? Is that a part of what this is about rather than sort of trying to hide from a part of yourself? Is it about this unity internally where you accept the serious or negative or dark parts of you as long as the light and try and find this middle way? And that's where that dance of enjoyment is. Is, is this it for an artist? Is that what it is? Integrating the shadow and facing it and... Yeah, I think I think in that in that in that juggling of the two selves, and of course everyone has two selves. No one's, you know, some of the so, some of the the heaviest songwriters I know are actually some of the lightest people. You know, like actually, and you know, you would think would be complete misery guts, but actually mm. they're actually quite a laugh, and you kind of sometimes can't quite imagine they write the songs they write. And so it's about it's about the. Yeah, it's about the juggling of the two, and in in the juggling, if you do, if you do juggle the two, you you'll learn a, a better outcome of, of 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 each, you know. But I think it always mm. is worth the juggling, you know, never to ignore either either side. It go it goes. For, I mean, I suppose yeah. there aren't really that many bands. I'm sorry, thinking like who, who do exclusively like very fun music. But I would say to the fun ones the same thing. Like, well, try and. Try something with a bit, you know, with a, with 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 some real depth, and that'd be interesting, you know. I mean, I would say that to like, mm. you know, if I could be in a room with Charlie Puth, I'd probably say that to him. You know, what I mean, it's like, you know, like you'll probably find everything gets stronger if you if you actually test yourself out. Songs are there to play with, you know. So songs are there to be uh, a fascinating thing that can be bent in any which way, and you know, no one's going to get hurt trying this or trying that. You know, they could even be in the same song. Bloody hell! You can start. You can start lively, end up miserable. You can start miserable, end up happy. Like you know, why not? Why not take people through lots of emotions? You know, 
rather than just one. I mean, it's all it, basically. I I could attribute a good eighty percent of my whatever you want to call it v- vaguely doing well down to down to being able to 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 try both sides. And you know, at my shows, people love. You know, I tell you what, for for, for my money, people love having fun more than anything else more than anything mm. sure oh you get yep. might cry at a song here or there you might sing a song but if you're having a real laugh people remember that forever genuine fun and songs can be that but mm. also they can be meaningful you can have meaningful fun it's like i think the constant people think fun is this thing oh no that's something that clowns do or that's something you know a children's entertainer does or your uncle does at christmas with the with some kind of party trick like no it, it it's you know Fun is 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 why we're alive. Channel that into a song, you know, and then you're absolutely winning, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's enjoying that dance, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm reminded of something yeah. Mick Fleetwood said when they first really started kicking into gear, and he said, you know, we got serious about our music, but not serious about our music. <laughs> you know, the thinking man statue, statue, and I think that was a really interesting point. It's like, yeah you have to really, really care about what you're doing, but also kind of not care. Yeah. And I know that sounds really silly, but there is something really in that. Because I, th- I think a part of it is you've got a job as an artist and it's to serve the music, okay? So that's one bit. And you got to, you do have to get a bit serious there. But once you've served the music, there's a holy trinity in music, I think. It's artist, art, audience. And if you're doing your job, which is digging into the well, enjoying yourself, being balanced, being open, having fun, trying, expanding outwards, while also not getting in the way of the music, not projecting, oh, today's song has to be this, if you serve it, then the next bit, I think, is genuinely letting it go and giving it to the audience because it's not yours anymore, okay? It's it's now a gift. You received it in the first place. I don't believe it's yours in the first place. I believe that you're some kind of vessel or vehicle for it um, and your job is to kind of be an open channel to let that come. Once you've got it, the song's there. I think that the next bit is this, okay, now I'm going to give it to everybody else. It's not mine anymore, so there's no need to be serious about it because it's not yours. And, and whatever outcome comes, that's down to the audience now because you've gifted it to them. Mm. Um, and this is something I'm working on with a few artists at the moment who are struggling to get the release happening because it's like, this is mine. And, and I get it. While it's on your hard drive or you're, get, you know, you're tweaking the mix, it is still yours. It's still something that you're working on and working yourself through. But once you give it away, it's not yours anymore, man. And it's kind of like never yours anyway. Like what you were saying in, in the beginning about most passive listeners um, are listening to music and they're not bothered about you. Um, it's like, yeah, and why would they be? You've gifted them with the song. It's about the gift, not mm. the gifter. Yeah. And maybe they do go, oh, do you know what? This guy's given me a lot of good tunes here. Like maybe I will go check him out. But that's, I think, a really important bit of it. Letting go of that end process and knowing that the song's not yours anyway, man. Like, yeah. You were lucky enough to sort of be there, yeah. you know? I mean, basically what's coming out of this conversation is that, you know, if you really want to be a great artist, you've got to go see a therapist <laughs> or something like that. I mean, I don't... Do you know it I, is, I, It probably is that. I mean, I, you know, I've been lucky enough I have, haven't <laughs> had to go there. But if you are having a problem, you know, letting go of a song in the first place, then, you know, that's a big obstacle to overcome. I mean, really, as you say, you're totally right. I mean, when you when you release a song, it's completely gone. Sometimes I compare it a little bit like, having a having a, uh, a a kind of I suppose a child in a womb and then it's out and then it does its own thing really although you kind of you know look after it a bit here and there but it you know can go off and do whatever it wants really um, at mm. some point in its life it, that's a really can be a really complicated thing I still think there's always a there's always a sadness with releasing music an inherent sadness. Mm. Um, and I'm always trying to put like a finger on it. What is it that is so sad about it? You know, it's never, it's never joyous. And, and not only that, it, it's often, it's always, it can be underwhelming, but also it can be really sad. And I've never, you know, and even if you know these emotions and you know they'll happen, they'll still happen again. And I've always thought, well, why is that? And I just think, you know, very often these songs, you, you know, sometimes they are little miracles and, Sometimes they're not. Sometimes you spend ages really thinking about it and getting it to exactly how you want. Some people spend years, some people spend months, but it's a bloody mm. long mm. time, right? You know, often. And I kind of think 
nothing matches that. You know, nothing as in, you know, when you release a song, very often you think, you know, you know what, you know what's right. The Queen should send a telegram to me today saying, well done, the song's out. Like nothing, nothing correlates to the amount of time and energy and efforts and emotional input that you've put into the song. In a sense, it's a way of going, even before you've put that out, you've got to realise that like, it's going to be a bit kind of miserable. I suppose it's, it's not, the night. it really isn't that good a feeling. It's going to be odd. You know, suddenly this thing's completely gone. You can't touch it again. You feel a sudden distance towards it. And I suppose the only thing you can think of really is just carrying on, do, and on to the next song. But I think some people really struggle with that. Like, it, you know, no song is ever met with what we really think it should be met with. You know, even if people, even if, again, really with number, it could be numbers, right? It could be, uh, you know, a, th- a thousand comments on Instagram saying, oh, this is the best song ever. Nothing really matches up to what we hope it would do. And I think that's a lot to contend with mentally. And I can see how often you know, there's a, a, a God, the amount of artists that maybe release one or two or three songs, and that would be that. You know, they just can't, yeah. they can't do it to themselves again consistently. And sadly, to do mm. well in this, landscape that's happening now an artist has to be fairly consistent they can't just go off for a few years and do this and that so you kind of got you know again you know more important than the guitar lesson finding a way to overcome these issues of 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 being able to release stuff and let go is kind of Mm. absolutely vital sadly i wish i mean it's 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 a weird world but you know I think it's. I think this is like one of the fundamental things that artists need to actually figure out, because it's not. The question isn't, you know, um, oh, how do I run a Facebook ad, or you know, how do I get my numbers up on Instagram? It's like Google it, man. You'll find out immediately. The question is, what's going on inside of me with all of this, you know, and like, why am I so attached? And something I talk a lot about is uh, mountain climbing is an analogy I like to use. You know, that we've got this goal, and that's the top of the mountain, and we we head off towards it. You know. And sometimes we just project on it so hard. We're asking everybody else, um, you know, how do you climb the mountain? How do I get my release over the line? This, that, and the other. And the, th- the truth is, with any mountain that we climb, that mountain top that you think you're climbing towards, million streams, whatever it might be, there's not really much there. You get to the top of the mountain, you put a flag in the ground, take a picture, enjoy the view, end of story. You know, we think there's a prize there. We, there's this illusion that the thing we're aiming at, there's a prize in it. And when you're climbing a mountain, I think that there is no prize at the end. The prize is hidden in the climb, which is everything that you learn, all the skills and attributes and that revealing of yourself through walking towards it. And I'm, what I'm trying to do is get artists to really disconnect from the top of the mountain mm. and outcomes. And because it's, I know it's an illusion and I know that in them just walking the path, that's where their fulfillment's going to come. That's where all the juice is, you know. So, so with letting go of songs, it's like let go of it because you, then you can get back to what matters, which is writing more songs, progress in the craft, the thing that you're actually doing, which is being an artist. And again, I'm, the way I'm trying to do it is to get people to recognise that you're giving it away as a gift and it's not yours anymore. Mm. And I think the only way to do this, to, to get there where you're better at letting go, is to cultivate it you have to do it you have to let go okay that's the first thing and then you got to do it again and then you got to do it again until you get into a bit of a flow where it's like you're okay with whatever the outcome's going to be you know and and you recognize what really matters and where you're going to get most of your juice which is back to the grindstone because that's where my prize is in this progress in this craft that I'm pursuing it's it's such an interesting thing man and I think that, that attachment to outcome and That's what's stopping so many people. Like, I just want to get more people into that flow of recognizing that progress equals happiness, not outcomes. Mm. And actually, just on that, I was talking about Van Gogh the other day about this to somebody about, you imagine if someone like Van Gogh was so, so attached to the outcomes, the need to be, you know, recognized in his time for his art, he would have stopped and we never would have had his art. You know, but instead he knew what he had to do, which is carry on the process. I've got to make this stuff. And okay, it wasn't appreciated when he was around, but afterwards we all got the gifts and we would have never had that. And I look at artists now, I think you don't actually know, and we don't know how much you have to give to the world because you're 
going to stop it short because you're attached to what you, you need the world to tell you how well you've done. Mm. That's not the one, you know? Yeah, it's super interesting, this stuff, man. I don't know if this is something that a would make a, a young artist try and find their way for better or worse. Very often, actually doing well, well out of music is a bit of a curse, <laughs> you know? Like, mm. sometimes actually it's worth remembering that a very many great, famous songwriters have killed themselves. Bloody loads. That's not a, that's not a fluke. Uh, there's reasons for that. It's weird. Uh, when you do well, so many more people get involved in what was the purest thing in the world. Now, I always think a little bit, care for what you wish for and, you know, set yourself up really well, but set yourself up enjoying it. Deal with the rest later. You know, what you've got there is the chance to have, I think, pretty much the best fun there is to have in life in terms of like, you know, nothing beats the moment where you've made a breakthrough on a song or you, you, you find a, a new melody or you fit that piece of the puzzle together. Nothing beats that. Absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I now make absolutely ridiculous amounts of money for my music. Does it, I, I don't really give a shit about it. I mean, I give a lot of it away. You know, the money is nonsense. Brilliant. And of course, with the, with the money comes all, loads of other people and loads of, you know, irritants that actually really stop you doing that job. Yeah, stop it. I, you know, I often say, if, so I, if I meet someone at a party and often there's this kind of bit of a clash and they go, you know, what do you do? And I go, oh, I do a few songs. And, and they're like, oh, yeah, I do songs and stuff. And, and then they're like, oh, well, and then someone says, oh, yeah, that guy actually, you know, lo you know <laughs> he's actually, you know, yeah. a professional <laughs> or whatever. And I say, well, look, yeah, maybe I am, but I guarantee you play more music than I do. You write more songs than I do. You probably have way more fun than I do. You know, there's a cost mm. and nothing, nothing beats that initial process. I just think like, you know, it, the focus on really enjoying it, you know, really, and, then that, and then that's when you get the good stuff. You know, that's when the good stuff comes out. But yeah, I think, you know, in a funny way, there's like, oh, I don't think there's, there is, a, I think there's like a real sweet spot. I've not to be kind of, uh, I don't know what the word is, you know, I'm not a bit of a bit of a dickhead here, but I've often tried to kind of stop myself becoming too big, you know, like I've, you know, I've, mm. I've turned down every off, every record label offer I've ever been offered. And there's been plenty. Good. And, you know, I've, I've, I've turned down other opportunities that could have got me X and X and X and X or put me in a different position or, you know, made me this or this or this, I, you know, or, or taken me out of my kind of realm of control. That can happen so easily. And mm -hmm. so, and I, you know, I think there is a kind of sweet spot. You, you don't have to be, you know, so luckily these days, you can actually, you know, you don't have to get that many streams to, to actually make a, you know, fairly solid living, you know, potentially. You Definitely. Know? And I saw something recently, something, I can't remember, correct me if I'm wrong, because you probably saw these figures and remember them better than I do. But something like, I don't know, was it like 20,000 20, artists earning over $50,000 a year or something? Mm -hmm. Something like that. It's loads. Absolutely loads. Yeah. And you think, you know, yeah. they go on about it being, this isn't acting. This isn't like, this is, you know, where there's like five films to be in and all the massive actors get them every time. There's 20,000 mm -hmm. slots here available and you don't have to be a genius. You don't have to do this or that or that to get that. And actually, you probably, I think someone probably doing that will probably have a much, probably nicer life than I do. I have a really nice life, I'm not complaining. But there are so many people in my way all the time. And I actually have minimal, the minimal amount of people in my kind of team, so to speak. But still, mm -hmm. the amount of admin, the amount of things to deal with and process is so much. And, mm -hmm. and it stops you from writing the songs in the first place. So I just think, don't even worry about that bit. I mean, you just got to remember, most of those artists, you look at Ed Sheeran, he looks miserable half the time. The poor guy. Uh, he's been fought, he, he looks yeah. the, the face that looks crestfallen as he's standing next to Lad Baby or whatever, looking like he'd rather be eaten by a herd of piranhas. You know what I mean? Like, as in, as in it's, it's not that great. You don't really want that. You, it, it, you know, you, all you want to do is have a, one, try and have a wonderful time, try and get a few people listening. It doesn't have to be millions to, to, to actually do well. 
first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for being the first guest on my podcast. Yeah, really, really grateful, really cool to have you come on. And yeah, thanks for your time and all of that. Just got one question I think I'm going to end every podcast on. If you could give one piece of advice to aspiring artists and music makers in the here and now, what would that be? You're going to have to give me, give me 14 seconds to give a really good answer to this. Meditate on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, I don't want to get this one wrong. You know, the, 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 the big one. Yeah, I've got it. My big piece of advice is to live. And what I mean by that is songwriting is not a job. You may think it's a job. You may sell it to Auntie Wendy at Christmas as a job. It's not. It's weird. It's weird. But it's about writing life. It's about writing what happens to you. I often think it's better, you know, if I look at my own life, I, all my success has come after having children. A lot of people think, oh, nappy, you can't write a nappy and, and write a song in the same, sorry, write a nappy, you can't change a nappy and write a song in the same hour. Well, you can, because there's nothing more inspirational than kids. There's nothing more inspirational than, you know, than seeing a child grow up and all the, all the undulations of that. And, I, and but that, I mean, look, whether you have kids, or, you know, that doesn't matter. The point is, it, it's not about waking up at nine o'clock and sitting down and going, time to write a song. Now, this is what's really complicated. It's about the balance. You know, sure, you have to work at doing, you know, you have to work at doing songs and songs do get better with time and with every song, you learn something new. However, without going out to live, without asking people questions, without listening well, without seeing new things, without hearing things, without, you know, exploring, your songs will be weaker, your experience will be weaker, and everything feeds into these songs, you know, it's like, it's like your dreams, it's like everything feeds into them, you know, whatever you do, it feeds into them, and you have to try and live a, a life which gives you the, gives you, gives you ammunition, to write interesting songs and you know it can be it, it can be as much as you know the amount of songs i've that have, that have been born from someone just saying the offline here or there you know but i was in the pub i was listening i asked them that question and actually that that me being there in the pub with that question being interested in their life and that in those their set of words and their set of circumstances whatever that might be that maybe made that song you know might have just made the song but no one obviously knows it no one sees that everyone just hears me singing nicely a nice tune with some harmonies and some piano that's the only really bit of advice i would say is just you know like it's not a normal job it's not nine to five you need to get out there and live you don't have to go crazy yeah. you don't have to take drugs you don't have to drink 20 pints you just have to go and, and be interested in the world be interested in people Mm -hmm. ask big questions don't ask mediocre questions don't ask just don't just set off a small talk get down to some nitty gritty come home with some actual things wearing some words and some thoughts and some feelings that that are lighting you further in, in your craft and you're on and there and then you're on a, then you're on a then you've got a much better chance basically i think that's brilliant and i couldn't agree more and i think it ties back to what we said earlier on about a very small percentage of the artist's lifestyle is pen to pad, you know, hands to keys. It's the living of it. It's an openness and awareness to capture life and be able to hear that, oh, that's a song or what that guy said in the pub. That's brilliant. And then coming back to the table and doing that. I think that's wonderful advice, Tom. And I hope more and more young artists can slot into that and open up to what it is to live at, as an artist and not just make tunes and try and get you know a million streams yeah. so thank you so much tom man honestly I, I can't thank you My enough pleasure. for doing this like it's been brilliant and um, hopefully we'll do it again sometime great thanks nice so one, much, man. all the best nice one dude you too man nice one <laughs>